Right, strength training in general, but with a particular reference to the throwing events in track and field athletics. The Soviet approach to strength training was the basis that the Soviet Union had much of their great success, along with an enormously wide selection programme and other matters as well. But nobody doubts that they fine-tuned the strength training side of the system very effectively. Okay, works authorship on Soviet strength training. There was a book by a man called Verkoshansky who effectively came up with the, the phrase plyometrics and the whole idea of the stretch reflex in strength training. And then there's a book by a man called Zaitsev called The Science and Practice of Strength Training that I um, strongly recommend. Now, my own personal experience, I discussed these things with my friend Paddy's coach in America, Roman Feldman, who was an event coach for the hammer throw um, at the Olympics and coached notable Soviet Olympic champions in the hammer. He also coached Soviet champions in the men's and women's discus. So again, from a track and field athlete's point of view, let's get to the nub of it. I, when I was coaching athletes in the shot put, I had the opportunity to contact and talk to a number of world champion shot putters, their coaches, etc., etc., uh, world champion hammer throwers, and one ex-world record holder in the discus. So there's a lot of feedback from that. Then I also did a little bit of work training strong men, etc., etc., in the throwing side of the events, but there was always lots of discussion about strength training. The, the Soviets said you can make an athlete stronger in just three ways, and they called them the repeated effort method, they called it the limit strength method, and they called it the speed strength method. And what they believed was every sport that had a strength element had different elements of these three factors. Repeated strength is when you're doing anything from eight to 12 repetitions with resistance. You build up the ability to do eight repetitions with a weight. You build it up to where you can do 12 repetitions. You are building up the ability to express strength repeatedly. This would be most useful in a sport like wrestling, Olympic wrestling, or a sport like rowing, or indeed these days in a sport like rugby. So that would be to the forefront. They also noticed that this type of training created more muscle mass, um, et cetera, et cetera. But with the track and field athletes, they used very, very little repeated effort strength training and they focused almost solely on limit strength, the ability to move the maximum weight and speed strength, the ability to move a moderately heavy weight quickly. Now, how they looked at it was the limit strength was based on how many motor units an athlete can recruit when they contract their muscles. And a motor unit is a nerve and muscle fiber together. And there's literally thousands of these in a muscle. And if you think about it, if you've ever seen the old hi-fi players, when the sound comes out, the little red LED lights would go up depending on the volume of the sound. So they'd go up with a louder sound and they'd go across. So they go, so the LED lights would light up to a certain amount depending on the volume of a sound on an old hi-fi speaker. Well, if you think of the muscles like this, what you're teaching the muscles to do is you're teaching them to be able to light up all the lights, to be able to recruit all the motor units. And that's done through what I would simply call limit strength training, where you're getting an athlete to lift between 90 and 95% of their one rep max for between one and three repetitions. Once you go above three repetitions, you're straying into kind of mixed strength, where it's a mixture of repeated strength efforts and limit strength. But to teach
teach the body this motor unit recruitment. It's all about continually lifting at the max. So you're talking about heavy, three repetition, two repetition, one repetition training for usually two to three sets, very, very little, and done repeatedly. Um, so you might have three sets of three type training done twice a week, slowly, slowly condition the athlete to being able to turn on all their motor uniforms, all their motor units, maximum strength. The nearest thing in sport to it is pure powerlifter training. And if any of you are interested in powerlifting, there was a kind of scientist and guru of powerlifting called Louis Simmons, and he had what was called the West Side Barbell Method, but he himself stated that it was applying Soviet sports science to the very American sport of powerlifting. However, they also applied speed strength because they found that, like the little red LED lights, the speed strength was the ability to turn all of those lights quickly. So to go from one or two to all of them lighting up instantly. So if you think about them lighting up, dip, 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 each little red light comes on. And what you're doing is you're continuing to train the athlete to be able to go whoosh, immediately. The way this was done, athletes lifted between 55% and 70% of their one rep maximum for two to three reps. But for more sets, anything between six and 10 sets, depending on how experienced they were and how long they were training. At a younger stage, six sets of two, five sets of three would be perfect. At a later stage, the athletes were doing eight sets of three, 10 sets of two, but a weight between 55 and 70% of their maximum. And they were attempting to move it as quick as possible. So it's all about low reps. Now, if you look at Soviet athletes from a certain era, and there's fantastic videos on YouTube about all round conditioning training of Soviet javelin throwers, discus throwers, shot putters, etc., etc., you'll see them, see them doing endless repeats of various different methods of throwing various different objects, various different ways. They are training their bodies to use the entire system and they're training their bodies to explode. All those athletes looked kind of lean. There is the 1992 Olympic discus champion Roman Ubartis, who's very tall and very slim, a very good athlete, but he was capable of massive, massive limit strength. He, he lifted almost the same kind of weights in the power lifts as professional power lifters, even though he looked more like a basketball player. Very, very, very strong. Now we know the Soviets used other methods which are now illegal, the use of performance enhancing drugs, along with their sports science. But don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. You can choose not to use the illegal methods, but you can learn from the Soviet methods of training. They taught the body how to stretch and recoil, stretch and recoil, stretch and recoil. They did endless repetition of throwing exercises for the throwers because they found this this directly um, improved the ability to perform a precise movement. So um, they, they, they looked at strength, repeated effort strength, speed strength, and limit strength. And they trained a lot in low reps. The Soviet model also involved changing the exercises every six weeks for kind of beginning athletes, but for the athletes who are experienced in the training system, they change the exercises every three weeks. So it was a huge menu of exercises and they were constantly changed and there was assistance exercises and main exercises. Now I'll go into something else that's of interest and that is what is general strength, what is specific strength and what is special strength? Well, the Soviets believed General strength pertaining to a shot putter, for example, would be the ability to simply bench press a very heavy weight, either explosively or close to your limit. 
the specific strength would be doing an incline bench press for a shot putter or perhaps a narrow grip bench press for a shot putter or perhaps even more specific doing an incline dumbbell bench press and they would shift and zigzag between improving general strength improving um, specific strength improving general strength improving specific strength because they found often when you improved your specific strength in exercise like the narrow grip bench press it directly affected the ability of weight you could lift in the general bench press and then you would attempt to improve the general bench press for a few weeks and switch on to another special exercise sorry specific exercise what did they mean by special strength special strength is effectively the ability to turn on all the motor units and turn them on instantly other sports they would call it explosive strength and they train for explosive strength with a wide range of different throwing exercises for the throwers of throwing heavy objects like pods like kettlebells etc etc also thrown lighter objects like throwing lighter shots etc etc bang 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 you're 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 improving this entire chain of strength and speed and coordination now right up to the olympics athletes would throw light implements but they also might throw heavy implements and the soviets found that in training your ability to explode quickly got tired earlier so what you would do is you would do your throwing of a light implement and explode quickly at the start and middle of a training session then at the end of the training session when the, the ability to explode quickly was tired you would throw a heavy object and you can still train the strength side afterwards so it might be a training session for hammer throwers of throwing maybe five kilo and six kilo hammers at the start building up to high level intensity some training practice throws with the comp competition implement and then at the end picking up something heavy like maybe a 20 kilo pod or a 35 pound weight and doing a few throws with that maybe even as few as three to five just to work the strength system after the speed and coordination system had been tired and that would work in a, a typical training session for them now with regard to lifting what you could do is you could do your speed exercises first and then do your heavy exercises afterwards but a lot of athletes didn't like that and the feedback they got was they didn't like that as much some athletes still did it some coaches still did it but what they settled into would be having a strength day on lower body lifts a strength day on upper body lifts a rest day and then a speed day on the same lifts so you might lift heavy lower body monday upper body tuesday day off wednesday do lower body speed work on a thursday do lower body upper body speed work on a friday rest saturday and sunday in your strength training but you'd be continually throwing practicing the actual event and practicing with heavy and light implements um, what else the throwers specifically through heavy implements and through light implements to develop speed and strength in the actual throwing events and it doesn't matter what you're doing it doesn't matter what sport you're doing you would practice the movement of the sport because it has a particular neurological signature what we call muscle memory and like a pianist always practice playing the piano an athlete always practices their sport because there's no point in increasing your physical capacities if you suddenly become rusty at your event now i had the good fortune to meet and speak quite a bit with adam nelson world champion shot putter reese hoffa world champion shot putter i had the opportunity to talk to randy barnes and mike stolce who are olympic shot put champions and ulf timmerman and these germans did a slightly different way of doing things 
they used less variety, they focused on lifting heavier implements, but they did the speed strength training in the gym. They did the limit strength training in the gym over a much um, tighter recipe of, of exercises or regime of exercises. So they might have worked on maybe six to eight core exercises, whereas the Soviets would work 20 different exercises through a year. And they almost always practiced throwing heavy implements for specific strength. They were very focused on specific strength. That was another route. Um, the Olympic champion Mike Stolci told me about his training and there was an awful lot of surprises in his training outside of the gym, but the training he did in the gym was very, very similar to the Soviet model. He lifted and lifted heavy six times a week. He focused on the Olympic lifts. His Olympic lifts became of such a high level and standard that he could well have very quickly sedged into becoming an Olympic lifter. But he was a shot putter. He won the Olympics. His strength levels were sky high. He trained very differently to Adam Nelson and Reese Hoffa, who trained quite similarly because they had the same coach. I see Ryan Krauser's training on YouTube. It's very much a mixture of the scientific stuff that the Soviets talked about with a few tweaks of his own because the technique of the rotational shot put and the demands of the rotational shot put were slightly different to the glide shot put method. And in specific terms, the East German glide shot putters used a different method to the Western glide shot putters and their technique, different strengths and weaknesses, different physical attributes, etc. etc. So for track and field athletes, if they have any conditioning at all, they can start 